Welcome to Monk and Divider Conundrum, the very first number theory problem and all of these, this entire set of problems is going to contain some heavy mathematics. So make sure you come to this problem ready and pumped and willing to solve it. Monk and Divisor Conundrum. Here's another task that Monk prepared for you. You're given an integer array A of size n. Monk needs you to answer t queries for him. In each query, he gives you two integers p and q. In response to each of these queries, you have to tell Monk how many numbers in the array are divisible by p, q or both. Can you cope with this? Can you do it? I think we can. But first, let's have a closer look at the question. n is going to be the number of numbers in the array. In this case, 6. Our array is going to be populated by 6 numbers. This is the array itself. 2 is the number of queries. Each query is going to have two numbers, that's p and q. How many numbers are divisible by 4? That is just 4. How many numbers in this array are divisible by 5? That is just 5. So our output is going to be 2 straight away. Similarly, we can have a look at the next query, 3, 7. How many numbers are divisible by 3? 3 and 9. The numbers divisible by 7 are just 7. That's why our output is 2 plus 1. 2 divisible by 3, 1 divisible by 7, that is 3. Have a look, have a gander, try the problem out and we'll get back to it really quick. Now guys, I'm going to draw a Venn diagram on the screen right here. It's going to be pretty intuitive as to why this works. This first circle is going to represent every number that's divisible by p. This next circle, every number that's divisible by q. Here you can see we've counted the center section twice, which is why we've got to remove it once, so as to ensure we've counted each section just once. What does this mean? Let's say we've got an array. To compute the total number of digits, and to return the correct result, we are going to have to count the numbers divisible by p, the numbers divisible by q, and remove the numbers divisible by both p and q. That is going to give us the correct final result. Say this is your array right here. 1, 2, 3 and 6. p and q are 2 and 3. 2 gets included once and 6 gets included once when we count the numbers divisible by 2. When we count the numbers divisible by 3, 3 and 6 both get included. 6 has been counted twice. We've got to remove one of those inclusions, which is why we subtract 1. The general formula is count how many numbers are divisible by p, count how many are divisible by q, and remove all those that are divisible by p and q. And you do that by calculating the LCM. My fellow hackers, here's the code. And then they were simply taking the first two lines of our input. N is the length of the array. And this is the array itself. Here, what we're going to do is, instead of waiting to read the query, instead of waiting for an input to come in before we calculate, what we're going to do is pre-calculate every possibility so that the moment a query comes in, we will already know the answer. How are we going to do that? First, we'll identify the maximum element. So the maximum element in this array is 9. So we're going to say maximum is 10, 9 plus 1. We're going to calculate the frequency of each element from zero to that maximum element. Now we populate that frequency array. Zero is not present in our array, so it's frequency is zero. Two is present, so its frequency is one. There's only one occurrence of two, one occurrence of three, and so on. This is in order to identify duplicates. So say there were two twos in this array, two, three, five, seven, four, nine, two. And let's say our query had two in it. So either P or Q was two. Four would be divided by not just one, two, but by two twos. The count would have to increase by two. That's why we've got to keep a track of the frequency. Here's where we pre-calculate how many numbers each element divides. So we start from one and move on to the maximum element. Now one is not present in our array. There's no one. So for now, div, the number of numbers one divides will remain as zero. Then we move on to two. When we hit two, we can see there is one occurrence of two in the array. So one divides one number successfully. We then move on to three. There is one three in the array. So one divides two numbers. 
we go on until we hit nine. Once this iteration is done, once the first iteration is done for i equals one, one divides six numbers, and then we move on to two. Now, what numbers is two divide? Two divides two, four, six, and eight. That means we're going to have to move up in steps of two. Multiplication does nothing but adding the same number to itself. So we're moving up in steps of the same number. We start at two. There is one two in the array, which is why two divides one number successfully. There is one four in the array, so two divides two numbers successfully. There is no six and there is no eight. We repeat this for each and every single number up until nine. Three will divide two numbers. That's three and nine. Four will divide a single number. Five will divide a single number. Six will divide no numbers. Seven will divide one. Eight will divide zero, and nine will divide one number. Now we have got all our information. So regardless of what query comes in, it's a simple matter of accessing it and pulling out the data. We take our inputs. That's P and Q. The LCM will give us the numbers that are divisible by both P and Q. And how do we calculate this LCM? It's simply x into y by GCD of x y, and the GCD is calculated by using Euclid's method. We access the value of p. If p is greater than maximum, it's just zero. Similarly, we access the value of q and the values of the LCM, that is p q, and we simply print a plus b minus a b, the numbers divisible by p plus the numbers divisible by q minus the numbers divisible by both. Let's see if this works. Compiles worked and submit has been accepted.